here we go again, the annual Sims 4 expansion pack review. This time it's the vaguely titled Growing Together, lucky expansion number 13 for The Sims 4. Following in the footsteps of the Parenthood pack with a wee bit of the old Sims 3 generations sprinkled in, Growing Together seeks to flesh out existing interactions and add complexity to its interdependent systems. In other words, Sims should feel more believable, in a social sense. With a heavy emphasis on their earliest years, from birth on up to adolescence. The most notable addition is a new life state, infant, falling between newborn and toddler. Now, they made a big deal about the free infants update, which adds them to the game for all players at no charge, and while that's great, the fact is you're missing a majority of what makes the infant life stage engaging unless you pay $40 for growing together. Like, sure, infants are still fun little gremlins, crawling around, getting into trouble, babbling incoherently and making messes, but they feel incomplete, because they are, lacking plenty of progression and personality, and the absence of several related objects feels stingy. So like when changing, caregivers just pick infants up and toss their dirty diapers on the floor, cause hampers and changing tables are only part of the paid expansion. And youngins can't develop their own traits or track key memories, since quirks and milestones are again exclusive to the full $40 pack. You do at least get some free cribs, clutter, clothing, furniture, and new baby-related fences and child-proofing options, but it still feels Scrooge-like to leave out basics like changing tables and dynamic personalities. That said, if you do buy the pack, there's a whole lot of neat stuff on offer. Particularly if you're into the whole family, legacy-focused simming style. And even if not, whatever, there's arguably a little something for everyone in growing together. It starts in the new world of San Sequoia, divided up into the usual trio of subdivisions with four lots each. It's a pleasant-looking harbor town inspired by parts of San Francisco, with a few Pacific Northwest vibes thrown in for good measure. Wharfs and piers, beaches and quayside areas, a movie theater rabbit hole building, fountain-filled parks and gardens with power-walkable pathways near the old fish canneries. It's a rather empty world, all things considered, but it's nice to look at. And I really like that cable-stayed bridge dominating the landscape, looming large regardless of where in town you happen to be. So, once you've fought off an army of real estate investment firms and actually buy your own Bay Area home, you're free to continue living as before, or begin a sim family. Either the, uh, traditional way, or the new way, with science! Yes, science babies are now a thing. Just pull up the app on your phone and order yourself a child made with any adult sim in the game. Doesn't matter who, as long as your friendship level is high enough, you can combine genes and bring home a fresh new science baby in an afternoon. You can even make one yourself through anonymous surrogacy, no friends required. And breastfeeding is now a thing, available to all sims, so long as they have the lactation checkbox ticked in Create a Sim, you've got milk. There are now also things like C-section scars and stretch marks available, along with all the standard new clothing, hair, and accessories expected from a new expansion pack like this one. Mostly for young adults and beyond, as usual, but also for the new life state of infants. <laughs> In theory, anyway. Yeesh! I know you were a science baby, but maybe science went too far. <laughs> My bad, I forgot I installed a cast animation mod. It was fine with that removed. And yeah, there's a whole section dedicated to infant attire. And, I mean, baby clothes, man. Choose whatever. Infants aren't picky. But they didn't skimp out on selection here. There's quite the handful of options. And the little folks are quite the handful themselves. So it's too bad there aren't any strollers. Though you do have back carriers now, which is arguably an upgrade, so that's cool, I guess. Infants and toddlers also have three hidden quirks to be discovered in the Somology tab, assigned from a possible 18. These affect things like how well they'll sleep, how they react to different food, what kinds of activities they do and don't enjoy, all with the goal of making each pint-sized sim uniquely chaotic in their own way. 
keep a close eye on the wiggly ones. They tend to get into some stuff. And all along the way, sims of any age now track milestones, acting as a record of memories for notable events. So the youngest age levels have milestones for things like learning new words, taking first steps, losing a tooth, and crapping themselves so bad they ruin the floor. And for older sims, it's stuff like graduating school, getting a sweet job, falling in love, and crapping themselves so bad they ruin the floor. Sims of all ages can also gain new traits and swap existing ones throughout their entire lives. So, repeatedly performing certain actions provides a chance to gain up to three new traits on top of what they already had, or swap out old ones for something different. Yeah, this trait self-discovery feels far more organic and more meaningful than just drinking a potion to reselect them or whatever. Child Sims also have new aspirations, Playtime Captain, Creative Genius, Slumber Party Animal, and Mind and Body, which incentivizes learning skills throughout childhood, giving a boost to a kid's confidence level. And the better they do as a kid, the more traits they'll be rewarded with as a teenager. Other welcome additions are family dynamics and social compatibility, adding new layers of interactive distinction between Sims. Family dynamics add behavior modifiers among Sims in the current household, signifying if Sims are close, distant, difficult, supportive, strict, jokesters, and so on. And these are chosen either directly in Create a Sim, or they can occur naturally through typical gameplay. And social compatibility is related to the existing likes and dislikes system, with conversation topics and sim characteristics in particular determining how well or unwell sims will get along with others of varying personalities and interests. Just a way to mix up everyday interactions and conversations and stir them around so not every sim feels so similar. This can also lead to adult sims having a midlife crisis if they go too long, doing things they hate around people they hate, with a job they hate, and everything is hate. Not to be confused with burnout, where sims get sick of repeatedly doing the same thing, a midlife crisis is a step above and adds a set of its own aspirations. They can then fulfill these in order to restore their sanity and ensure they don't live a life of regret. This ranges from such light-hearted silliness as befriending rabbits and spending thousands on electronics, to cheating on your partner and getting a divorce. All optional, but still, they don't call it a crisis for nothing. Perhaps the new social events would be a better use of your sim's time. With slumber parties, baby showers, and family reunions available as timed occasions, offering rewards for completing objectives. There are also stayovers, a new event that functions as more of an extended visit for family and friends, adding them to the household for a while without moving them in permanently. The suitcase and sleeping bag objects Sims can now tuck away in their inventory make this even easier, acting as a portable dresser in bed, respectively. Also great for challenges playing a nomad or unhoused Sim, wandering the world with not much more than a sleeping bag and a change of clothes. And if they need a shower, they can drop by the rec center, a new lot type serving as a hot spot for enjoying hobbies, developing skills, and doing some group socializing. Perhaps over a jigsaw puzzle or a game of symbols, the latter resembling a game of dominoes. It also contains a fenced-in spot for youngins to go mad, but it's a bit small and makes me wish for more kid-friendly public spaces. There's not much in the way of new playground equipment, no seesaws or sandboxes like in The Sims 3 Generations, although treehouses do make their return, bigger and more modular than before. Once assembled from a kit, Sims child-aged and older can climb inside and have fun decorating it, making up rules, installing additions, and generally hanging out, enjoying the view. You can practically live up there with the ability to sleep inside, and yep, it counts as a new woohoo location, because of course it does. And lastly, there are plenty of other objects to purchase and utilize, like high chairs for experimenting with solid baby food, child-sized bicycles for kids to learn how to ride a bike and wander the neighborhood, and keepsake boxes set aside for elder sims to maintain and store sentimental objects to one day pass down to younger sims. 
along with 11 chairs and chair-like seating apparatus ideal for taking a much-needed sit after another long day of running around saving tots from their own curiosity. And that is The Sims 4 yeah, grow, has, I was gonna say get together, it's growing together. Why do they name me so similar? Anyway, growing together, the 13th $40 expansion pack, and yet another that I'd say is just fine, but rather unnecessary. It sure does add some welcome complexity to the social simulation, and that I approve of wholeheartedly, but I'm also left a bit wanting compared to what we got back in the day with Generations. As a few examples, there are no imaginary friends, there's little in the way of new kids playthings or play spaces, no new after-school activities or clubs for young sims that I saw, and of course, still no cars or driving for teens to enjoy that whole rite of passage. Plus, no new jobs or careers at all, certainly no daycare profession like we had in the past, and almost nothing new specifically for elders. Beyond the tiny keepsake box, Grandpa filled with old fireworks and tomatoes for some reason. So, oh well, it is what it is, and it falls short of reinventing things enough to get me back into The Sims 4. It's no secret I've been ready to move on to a fifth game for years now, or onto Life by You or Pair Lives for that matter. It's simply time for something fresh. And growing together, it's anything but fresh. It's a flavor enhancement pack, so to speak, rather than a juicy, meat-filled expansion. A bit of spice for the ingredients we already have, not a proper filling meal. Uh, my analogy is getting away from me here, maybe I'm just hungry, but you get what I mean? I need more than spice for $40, dang it! Growing Together adds a number of nifty features many will be glad to see, and rightly so. Sims of all ages really do feel more complete. But, your specific tastes are what determines a thing's value. Personally, my values are elsewhere these days, and seeing yet another expansion like this hasn't changed that. And if you enjoyed this, I've done plenty of Sims things in the past, and I plan to cover Project Renee, Paralives, and Life by You in the future, along with retro computing stuff in the meantime, here on LGR. And as always, thanks for watching.